It's a 1961 period piece coming of age film about two girls that live in a rural town in Oklahoma and oh, and I play a shy farmer's daughter ridden with anxiety an alcoholic mother who finds herself really um, affected and transformed by this cool new city girl that comes to town and the whole story is a lot about finding you know confidence and love and you know acceptance. acceptance yeah yeah it's like a female friendship story but it also has a lot of um there's a lot it's kind of an ensemble there's a lot of interesting characters and sort of about just repression all like all the characters the parents the moms the dads the the, the girls in the movie just being repressed by sort of societal restrictions especially in that that time in america so. where did the inspiration for the story come from well, we can't really speak to that because we didn't. <laughs> yeah, we didn't write it. But um, I, I think that Shannon, the writer, she, um, she sounds like she had a, like a like a waking dream vision of, <laughs> of two girls in a pond, and then it just went from there. I don't know. It's kind of a mystical quality to her. You guys filmed in Enid, Oklahoma. We did. Um, what was it like to actually film in Oklahoma? And what was the, you know. Did you guys get accepted by the local town folk? Oh my God, yes. They were so welcoming and kind and really excited when they heard we were shooting a movie there. Everyone seemed really happy. And Enid, I mean, for me, for that month that we were shooting, well, the 20 days, it kind of became like a little second home. It was really, it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, having that kind of community makes any place feel like home. Yeah. Yeah, I think that they, you know, it's something that doesn't happen a lot in Enid, although they had had another movie there a year before called Wildlife. Um, but they had a really good experience with wildlife, and so they were, it's just, you know, it just brings, like, new people to town, uh, something to talk about. Shakes you know, things up. Shakes things up. Cameras and lights and Hollywood folk and everything <laughs> yeah. like that. Yeah. So, you know, filming a period piece is very unique because you got to get everything right, or most everything right. So talk about the challenges of finding the cars and the clothing and the... Uh, um, even the makeup styles were different in the 60s than they are now. Yeah, I think it's just, um, it was really important for us to be as authentic as possible and to just let the audience really feel like they're immersed in 1961, which really feels like 1951 because, you know, fads and, and fashion, it's more stalled in more remote areas. So, yeah, we did a lot of research. Our costume designer she's she's out of LA she's really just has some great connections and was able to get us like a truck truckload of clothes yeah, it's a lot of <laughs> she's great uh, and our production designer just you know just they just did their homework and luckily um, because of this sort of things ch- it's a little slower to change we were able to find places that had kind of been untouched by time there's like a high school gymnasium that we use in the movie that is like a time capsule like it's straight straight out of another world and um so just finding those little hidden gems what that was important on a movie of this scale so we weren't having to build sets and stuff like that yeah So, so you know you're talking about rural oklahoma and you bring up a really good point that in anywhere in rural america it could be 1960 but you can have stuff from the 40s and 50s because they're not so advanced or they don't move as fast they don't adopt as fast as the bigger cities as that was that a challenge in finding you know costumes and cars and saying okay what did Enid look like or what did rural Oklahoma look like in the 1960 1961 era yeah I think we just really tried to focus on it feeling more like the 50s than the 60s um just even like I'd say the high school girls we and there was like a difference when you say that when Maggie, the character that comes from Kansas City, she has a different aesthetic than the other girls in school. Yeah. Let me tell you, clothes are not as comfortable back then. Right. <laughs> uh, they're a little more itchy. They're a little tighter. Girls have bullet bras. That's, let's be really grateful, ladies, that we don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it was really marvelous watching you guys put on the layers of these different decades, finding just little things that are not from the 60s and just going oh my god that makes so much sense you know 
And even with like your mom, like um, Jordana's character, we tried to um, give her, she's like the only woman in the movie that wears pants. And um, which I think speaks a lot about her sort of character's world and, and, and it's very insular in her home. And, but also we were trying to give her almost like this with her hair, a little bit of like, um, like a late forties glam look, because the idea is that she's a little stuck in her head when she feels like she was most beautiful. So yeah, just trying to, cause you know, I mean, when I sometimes go back, I'm from like rural Kentucky. I, I see women that still are doing their hair and makeup like they did in the nineties or whatever, just because you get stuck on a certain style and you don't move past that, I guess. So it's just like interesting little things to do to, to make this, the world feel more like a real, like real, I guess, or in depth. As an actress, you know, you, you live in the, you know, 2000s, we're in 2019, but what did you learn about yourself having to put yourself in this time period, in this time capsule, and what did you learn about yourself in acting in this in the, in the 20, 30 days? What did I learn days? about myself, yeah. putting myself in this time period? That's a really interesting question. Um, I suppose I, I learned I used my phone too much. They didn't have those back then, if y'all were wondering and it turns out we're all addicted now you know how it feels like a part of your hand they didn't have those back then it's a big it's a big difference you feel a lot more connected i think to the people around you and to your setting when you don't have that sort of distraction you take everything in a bit more and i just found it uh, a nice way to think about putting away your screens for a minute and just taking everything in as it is Building on that answer you gave me, sure. are you now finding yourself more conscious about being addicted to your electronics, your pads, your phone? I always stuff? kind of was, but I definitely think making this movie. I mean, I came to set every day and I would try to leave my phone in my trailer and read a, just bring a book. Just, it just made me feel a little bit more connected to the world around me. You know, we're in Bentonville, Arkansas. We're, you know, right next door to the state of Oklahoma. How does it feel to really bring this film, quote unquote, home? to this area and to show what you guys have done. I mean, it's a pleasure to be here. It's an honor to be able to show our movie here and to be able to come back. It's a, this, the Midwest area is not someplace I spent a lot of time growing up. I'm from Boston, Massachusetts. And when I turned 18, I moved to Los Angeles. So this was very much for me an adventure and being able to come back and to, in a sense, sort of relive that filming experience it's it's really wonderful. It was one of my favorite. It, it's one of my favorite experiences of all time was making this movie. So it's really, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so growing up in Boston, moving to LA, you you had some idea of what we were like here in the South or the Midwest. And when you actually got here and experienced who we were, you know, culture and food and who we are as a people, what surprised you the most? And what do you like about this area? Oh, my gosh, the. What, what's it? The Southern charm. That's a very real thing. I didn't completely realize how much the Southern gentleman and the Southern charm was so... It, it was, I experienced, I was surprised just how much it was so prevalent in the culture. So that was really delightful. That's awesome. So what's next for the film? Where is it traveling to next? We have more, we have more festivals coming up. Um, like it'll be at Seattle in uh, a week or so and some others i probably can't say yet all right but it's going to be around yeah. so keep an um, eye out for it yeah and then um and then uh, we'll have our international premiere also can't say where but we get to go abroad and take oklahoma it. overseas yeah and um then you know hopefully more people will be able to see it before the year is up also, I have to be cagey. Can't say I know, that. I know, but there'll be opportunities for people who yeah. are interested. What's next for you guys professionally? I mean, I'm not really able to say quite yet. It's kind of... A lot of work, no sleep? Uh, Safe to say? I'd say a fair balance. All right, cool. <laughs> I uh, got a lot, lot of stones in the fire. <laughs> what do you say? A lot of pieces of bread in the oven. All right.